Hi, I'm Kang. I'm one of the developers working on OpenVR advanced settings. I'm here in VRChat because if you're not familiar with it, it has a great full body tracked avatar system, which is ideal for showcasing the new features in advanced settings. So please don't mind the wild avatar. Uh, Advanced Settings is applicable for any SteamVR application, and I'll show it working in other programs later in this video. So the Advanced Settings team has been hard at work updating Advanced Settings to version 3.0 for you all. Username223 has implemented the SteamVR input system for rebinding. That means any, any binding that we have on the controllers now can be completely rebound to anything the user wants. And so that's in now. Another team member, Akira, has uh, been adding support for that binding system uh, to the haptics warnings with the chaperone, as well as uh, updates for uh, audio profiles. But in this video, I want to talk about what I've been working on. So you may be familiar uh, with the space dragging feature already in advanced settings. It looks like this. This was implemented by another team member, Icewind. Uh, looks like that. So what I've added is gravity physics. It works like this. Now you can throw yourself around. Uh, one thing to note is that the chaperone will stay updated and uh, accurate and keep you safe while you throw yourself around. Uh, this is fully customizable in the interface uh, with uh, all sorts of options for the gravity, including uh, a reverse gravity bind that looks like this. The other thing I've been working on, uh, I'm calling space turn. Uh, it's a lot like space drag in that uh, it cancels the motion, but instead it works with rotation. So if I point my hand at the mirror here and I activate this bind, now when I rotate my hand, it's still pointing at the mirror no matter how I rotate it. So that rotation of the hand was canceled into the VR space. Uh, this is really useful for manual redirected walking, and I'll show you what I mean now. So uh, if I wanted to walk over here, I would have to stop at the end of my physical space. Uh, but if I just naturally have my hand hanging to my side and I use that as a reference, then when I activate the bind, the, the rotation of my whole lower body is going to be canceled uh, into the VR space. That means when I turn around the corner like this, that rotation will be canceled and I'll just keep going straight in the VR, in the VR space. It looks like this. It takes a little bit of getting used to, uh, maybe five or ten minutes worth of practice, uh, but uh, once you are used to it, uh, it's really immersive and also really convenient. So for example, uh, if I was right here and I wanted to go over there, uh, I could just do a little spin and kind of reposition my play space like that and uh, just be able to walk over there one-to-one -one physical space. Um, so some things to note, though, uh, because it does cancel the rotation in the VR space, uh, we, d we do keep track of it in advanced settings statistics here. So you can keep track of how many turns you've made if you need to untangle your wire. But other programs that try to track the headset's rotation may get off. They might be get tricked by the canceled rotation. So if you need to check your wires tangling, then this should always be accurate. But other programs might not be. Uh, another thing to note, uh, if you're looking at this and thinking, <laughs> VR space rotation, that's going to make me sick, um, we have a comfort mode. So over here, you can turn on the, uh, the space turn comfort mode, and that will make it less smooth. So now it feels more like a snap turn, um, and that might help uh, people who don't like that kind of smooth motion. You can turn it way up, and it's going to really, really remove any sense of motion there, uh, but you can still get the same functionality. Um, as far as uh, options for gravity, you can change the gravity strength like this. Right now we were on Earth gravity, so if I select moon here and I toss myself around, now it's like I'm on the moon. Uh, you can type anything you want in. This is in meters per second squared. Um, also, right now, uh, save momentum was on. If I turn that off and I deactivate gravity, I'm just going to fall down with uh, no momentum saved, but if I turn it on, throw myself, uh, deactivate gravity, and then reactivate gravity, I'm going to keep going with that previous momentum. <laughs> so uh, those are some of the options for gravity. You can also change the fling strength. So if I want to throw myself really far, uh, and I just turned it on to four right there, uh, even a small movement in my hand like this is going to fling me way up like that. So actually, let's get back down. Yeah. 
So you can play around with those settings and uh, uh, have some fun. Uh, also, uh, we have a snap turn. Actually, before I get to that, let's talk about the height toggle. Uh, so the height toggle, uh, I can use, for example, if I wanted to be in a seated mode and I wanted to be able to kind of climb up here and talk to my friends, um, I could set this, this uh, offset as my height toggle. And now when I hit the bind that I have to bind in the uh, uh, SteamVR input system uh, bindings, but when I hit that bind, now, oops, actually, let's fall back down. There we go. Uh, that's the new gravity floor, like that. And uh, it's going to just toggle me up and down like that. If I turn off gravity, I'll uh, just go straight up and down. If I turn on gravity when I deactivate it, I fall down, like that. Um, that can also be used for kind of tricky things, like, uh, for example, uh, if I want to drag myself, oops, I'll pop up out of the floor if gravity's on. Uh, so I just turned it off. If I'll drag myself under the floor like this, now I set this as the height toggle offset. Uh, now, if I want to throw myself uh, up out of the ground, uh, and then when I do that, um, actually, let's, let's turn it on, so I'll fall down. So now the, height, now the height offset is activated. If I throw myself out of the ground and then activate that uh, height offset, uh, while I'm flying in the air, then I can land on the floor. So I can do tricky things like this, throw up, activate, fall down. Looks like I lost hip tracking for a second there when I do that. Let's let's do that again. So throw myself up, activate, and fall down, like that. So you can play around with things like that and uh, see, see what other uses you can come up with. There's some interesting combinations, uh, especially with uh, uh, the access lock options here in the space off offsets. So, Play around and see what you can come up with. Um, all right, so uh, I want to talk about uh, that snap turn and setting up a binding in the SteamVR input system. So let's first, first of all, let's just do a simple bind of a single action and show how to do that. So I don't have the snap turn bound right now. I'm going to go into settings here under controller bindings. I've got to scroll all the way down until I see advanced settings. Uh, if you don't see this, you might need to install the uh, SteamVR beta branch. Uh, right now, in the live version, it doesn't uh, it doesn't support overlay applications, but the beta does. So if you don't see it, try going on to SteamVR beta. All right, so these are my bindings I have right here, um, but I don't have that snap turn bound. So if I want to add a new binding, uh, let's add it to the A button here. I'll choose that right there. Whenever you want to add an action, you need to hit this little plus icon on the, that button. So let's do that. And uh, choose use it as a button. In general, you want to use it as a button. Uh, and on the click, I'm going to add the action of snap turn right. Now, if you don't see that action list, you might be in a different tab here. So there's different, different categories for the bindings, but these are the motion bindings. So, so I added that there to the A button. Uh, on click, it's a snap turn right. So let's see what happens if I hit the A button. Now I'm doing my snap turns. It works. Those are customizable in the interface. Right now it's set to 90 degrees. I could go all the way down to 15 degrees or uh, up to 180 degrees like that. Um, yeah, so that's how you do, that's a simple example of adding a binding. Uh, but uh, for example, what I was doing with the space turn and space drag, uh, that's actually some pretty complex bindings. Uh, I could do a single click to rotate, a double click to drag, but then a single click if I have an active drag to swap back and forth and keep climbing, um, all on the same button. That's all on the menu button for the Vive wands or the B button on the knuckles. So uh, now I want to talk about how you set up some of that more, uh, some of those more complex bindings. So uh, let's go back to the controller bindings here, down at the bottom, select advanced settings. And I'm going to use a blank binding set. Let's use that one. Select it. All right. So now nothing is bound here. Uh, so every time you want to add, add an action, as uh, I said before, you got to click this plus button. In general, use things as a button. And so on single click, I was doing rotation. So let's add that for click. Let's do the uh, left hand space turn because it's the left hand. All right. So now, for the double click, I need to add another uh, another button. And uh, under more options here, I'll choose double. And 
so now I could add the left hand space drag right here, uh, but if I do it like this, there's actually going to be a problem uh, because when I do the single click, uh, that's also active as the second time in the double click. And well, let's just see what happens. So if I do the rotate, that works. If I do the drag, that works. But the rotate is also active at the same time, and it's kind of crazy. It's pretty hard to control. If I spin around, I kind of fly. It's, it's really weird. Uh, you might want that, but you probably don't. So uh, the way to fix that is uh, uh, on the double click, I want only the space drag to be active. So I want that to override everything else. So I'm going to choose the override version of that option, of that action. Um, so we had the left hand space drag. Let's find the override left hand space drag and try that. All right, so let's see what happens. Single click does the uh, rotate, and double click does the drag, but the rotate is not active anymore, so you can just switch between them just using that one button. So, but additionally, we had that single click swap, so let's add that in too. Now, you might think that you could add that right here under single. Uh, that would make sense, but uh, right now, with the SteamVR input binding system, uh, that doesn't work. It might be a bug, I don't know. But every time you want to add a new action, you should hit this plus button to get a new copy of the button for that. So let's get a new copy of the B button and down here. Let's use it as click again. That'll be a single click. And now let's use this swap active drag to the left hand. So let's try that. Um, but the right hand's not doing anything yet, so we need to bind that too. So let's kind of review uh, the setup. So every time you add an action, you need to hit that plus. In general, use things as a button. So for the single click, we wanted the, now this is the right side, so the right hand space turn for single click. We want to add another action, so click the plus again, use it as a button. This time we want more options because we want to get that double click, find that there. And we're going to use the override version of the right hand space drag so that it stays active only on its own. It doesn't uh, simultaneously activate with other things. So we're going to write, uh, override right hand space drag, we'll use that. And then let's add in uh, the single click for the swap, but uh, we don't want that there. We need to make another copy of the B button. Use as button and go down here, find it down here. You might have to scroll down and there it is. And a swap active uh, space drag to the right hand. Let's use that. All right, so now if I do a single click, it does the rotate, double click, does the drag, but a single click, during an active drag will let me kind of climb around like this. So that all works. So that's how you use the override actions and uh, that's how you kind of set up those more complex bindings. Um, yeah, so next I want to show you uh, advanced settings working in other SteamVR applications. So uh, let's check that out now. All right, well, here I am in the lab and you can see, normally you would have to teleport around and this would be the end of it. You can't go any further, but uh, all the motion features work over here too. So I can just redirect it, walk my way beyond where I would normally go. I can throw myself with gravity, check stuff out. Everything works just fine here too. All right, well, here we are in Job Simulator and you can see that all the motion features still work. Normally, I'd have to stop at the edge of my room here, but I can do my redirected walking here. My bind is activating the briefcase, but uh, and go and get this paper airplane that I threw. I can still throw myself with gravity, so I can move a little faster that way if I need to. I can check out what's over here. I can check out what's up here. And everything works just fine. All right. Well, here I am in Beat Saber, and you can see that the motion settings should still work.
can go exploring. And everything works just fine. All right, so here I am in Space Pirate Trainer. And uh, you can see uh, everything works just fine. I can aim. Um, you'd think that uh, with all these features, you'd be able to cheat. Uh, but I'll show you how it's easy enough for developers to completely prevent that. So the game lets me play as normal here when I'm inside my play space. But if I travel outside with the advanced settings features, if I go far enough, they've disabled, disabled shooting. Uh, so they, it keeps track of the original play space over there, and it knows that once I'm far enough out, and now I can shoot again, back here I can no longer shoot. So the same thing goes for uh, the vertical direction here. So if I, if I get back here, I can shoot. If I fly up, I can no longer shoot. So, uh, you know, that's up to the devs for what the threshold is from the original play space size for how far they want to disable that. They could disable it right here if they wanted to. Um, we don't prevent any of that with advanced settings. Um, they can still keep track of the original play space. Um, but it gives you the option now to go and explore. Of course, my gun doesn't work. But all the, all the, uh, the, the play space motion functions still work as they should. We're free to explore back here. You know, kind of curious about that spaceport up there. Let's see what we can do. Let's go to the motion tab, turn fling way up, and uh, fling ourselves over there. Are we ever going to make it? Is it a skybox? Looks like we're making some progress. All right, after a long flight over here, looks like you can actually kind of explore it. Oh, look at that. So, of course, I can't cheat in the game, but I can explore it. All right, confirmed. I didn't warp anywhere. Well, that brings us to the end of this video. It got a little long because of all that stuff on the input binding. Thanks for watching all the way to the end. I want to give a big thanks to the rest of the OpenVR Advanced Settings team and to all the other people who helped me with testing uh, while I was trying to make these new features. If you're curious how all this OpenVR Advanced Settings stuff works under the hood and you see me online sometime in social VR, don't be afraid to say hi. We can have a chat and geek out about VR technology. For full details on how to use OpenVR Advanced Settings and all the patch notes, I'll have a link to our GitHub that'll have a documentation for all that stuff. So, until next time, that's about it for me. Take care, and have fun in VR.